Today we will be discussing load and store instructions of form. You know the purpose of load and store instruction? It is meant to transfer the data between the memory and the processor register. So what is the purpose of load instruction? So if you want to transfer the data held in the memory to a processor register, we will use load instruction. Store instruction is used to do the vice versa operation. The data held in the register, you can write to the specified memory location using store instruction. So this is the purpose of load and store instruction, correct? So there are three types of load store instructions in ARM. These are the three types, single register transfer, multiple register transfer, and swap instruction. So we'll be discussing one by one each of these types of load store instruction. We'll start with single register transfer, then we'll discuss multiple register transfer, and finally, swap instruction. Okay, this is what we are going to discuss under load store instructions of ARM. Coming to the single register transfer, so as the name itself indicates, single register transfer means so these instructions are actually used for moving the single data item in and out of a register. We are going to have a data in the memory. For so that data, we are going to transfer, uh, that is a word data, we are going to transfer from the memory to a register or from the register to a memory. It is just one data item we will be dealing with in single register transfer. It is not that multiple data we are transferring between register and memory. It is just one data item that is transferred between register and memory. It may be a byte data, word data, or 16-bit data. We are trying to transfer just a single data item between register and the memory. So this is about single register transfer. Or that is the meaning of single register transfer. So these instructions are used for moving a single data item in and out of the register. Okay. And the data types supported uh, with respect to single register load store instructions are signed and unsigned words, signed and unsigned half word, and signed and unsigned bytes. So this is, these are the different uh, data types we can deal with with respect to uh, load store instructions. That is signed unsigned word. That is nothing but 32-bit data we can deal with. Or it may be 16-bit data, which is called as half word. Or it may be 8. 8-bit data or a byte data which is signed or unsigned. So these are the data types which are supported with respect to load store instructions. Signed and unsigned word of 32-bit, signed and unsigned half word of 16-bit, signed and unsigned byte which is 8-bit. Okay. Going on to the syntax of load store instructions. These are the syntax you can go through. LDR is the mnemonic with respect to load instruction and str is the mnemonic with respect to store and we can specify the condition attribute you can observe we can specify the condition attribute which is optional to the instruction and if you want to suffix b to this ldr str instruction you can also do that where b stands for byte if you want to load a byte data from the memory to a register or store the byte data which is available in the register to the memory then you can make use of NDR and HTML mnemonic. So don't specify B fixed to NDR instruction. Uh, 32-bit data transfer between the register and the memory. So if you are uh, suffixing B uh, to this LDR STR mnemonic, then it is nothing but byte transfer between the register and the memory. So it may be uh, retrieving the data from the memory, which is a byte data to a register or writing a byte data to the memory location. So this is the mnemonic you can use. You can observe here it is parenthesized. That means it is optional in the LDR STR instruction. So conditional attribute can be given to LDR and STR and we can also suffix B, uh, that letter B meaning byte. Okay, where we are transferring byte data between the processor register and the memory. And it is the two operands we are specifying. That is RD, the destination register, so if it were to be load instruction, this will be the destination register. So if it were to be store instruction you are using, that means uh, this register, the first operand what you specify, which will hold the data which is to be written to the memory location. The second operand instruction, it is addressing is specified. Meaning you can use a different addressing modes for accessing the memory. We have seen a few addressing modes where 
space register gets specified in the state brain. So whatever that child in that register, from that address data was fetched and it was uh, written to a uh, register specified as first operand in the LDR instruction. And we have used uh, some offset we can specify along with the base address register. So like this, there are different addressing modes with respect to load and store instruction. So what are those addressing modes supported? Uh, that we'll be discussing in the later slide. So for the time being, just know that uh, we are going to write the expression, which is the second operand in LDR STR instruction to access the memory, whether you want to perform read operation or to perform the write operation. So these are the two operands you are specifying in the LDR STR instruction. The mnemonic is LDR or it may be STR. Condition attribute is optional. Then we can specify B in addition to LDR STR. Suffix B can be given, which indicates byte transfer. First operand. With respect to LDR, it is the uh, destination operand which uh, holds the data that is fetched from the memory. Or if it were to be store instruction, RD holds the data which is to be written to the memory. Second operand in this instruction indicates the expression for accessing the memory. So for, uh, for writing the expression, we can use different addressing mode that we'll discuss in the later slides. Next syntax, you can observe the LDR. Same mnemonic with respect to LDR, we are seeing this uh, uh, next syntax. Condition attribute we can give to this, it is optional. And we can observe, I can have these mnemonics LDR SB, LDR H, LDR SH, space RD, comma, addressing. So in each of these LDR STR instructions, these two operands we are specifying. First operand will be the register always, and second operand is the expression to access the memory. This is in general, you have to remember. Just observe what instruction. In addition to LDR STR, what are the new mnemonics you have encountered? LDR B I can use, STR B I can use as in this first syntax. In addition to this, I can also use LDR SB. SB stands for signed byte. Okay. LDR SB, LDR H, L, that is uh, uh, load uh, half word and LDR SH signed half word. These are the mnemonics we can have LDR SP, LDR H, and LDR HH with so respect to signed and unsigned half word. And already we have seen unsigned byte LDR B. Signed byte it is LDR SB. You can make use of Okay. And the last syntax is with respect to store. So we are having, uh, there are only uh, three store instructions. Just STR you can use for 32 bit write operation. And if you want to write byte data to the memory, STR B you have to use. Uh, 16 bit data if you want to write to the memory, then you have to use the STR H. So with respect to STR, these are the three mnemonics. What are the three mnemonics? It is STR, STR B, and STR H. Okay. So there is no signed unsigned with respect to str instruction so it is just the right operation to the memory you are doing so whether the data held in the register is signed or unsigned data it will simply write that data to the specified memory location so there is no uh, sh or uh, sb instruction with respect to store okay so these are the new syntax we need to remember with respect to single register transfer ldr or str with condition attribute and B suffix uh, with two operands, RD comma addressing. So next LDR with condition attribute. And these are the suffix you can give for LDR, SB, H or SH. And again two operands we are specifying, RD comma addressing. And STR condition attribute, H suffix can be given, which means half word. As we, along with that uh, mnemonic, you can specify the uh, two operands. One is the register, other is the memory. Okay. So this is the syntax with respect to load and store. Coming to the list of load store single register transfer instructions supported. This table gives that details. Okay. As I've already told, yes, LDR and STR, which we have used in all the programs, what we have discussed so far, which involves memory. Okay. LDR, it loads a word into a register. STR, it writes the byte or word from a register, okay? Uh, uh, we can uh, write the byte data held in a register to the memory, okay? Uh, you can see here uh, the expression given. Uh, this is the notation we are using uh, to represent the memory operation. 
uh, LDR instruction. You we'll just see the last column. 32-bit data will be fetched from the address, whatever was specified in the square bit. So from that address, it fetches the 32-bit data and it transfers to the register. So STR instruction, whatever the data is available in the register, that will be returned to the address specified in the instruction. 32-bit data uh, we are going to write. LDRB and STRB are with respect to the byte data transfer. Uh, load byte means 8-bit uh, data is fetched from the memory and it is transferred to the register. STRB means 8-bit data is returned to the uh, memory location. That is STRB. LDRH and STRH, that is with respect to half word, 16-bit. Half word means 16-bit. If you, uh, you can just retrieve 16-bit data from the address, specified in the instruction and we can transfer it to the register or we can write a 16-bit data uh, into the memory location. Okay, uh, that is STRH and LDRSB and LDRSH are the other two mnemonic supported. Whatever we have discussed in the syntax, same thing in detail we have written in this uh, slide. Okay, LDRSB that is signed by, SB stands for signed by. Uh, we are retrieving a signed uh, data from the memory memory and we are writing to the register and similarly LDRSH it is signed half word uh, that is fetched from the memory and it is returned to the register. So this is about uh, the instructions supported in ARM uh, with respect to load and store single register transfer and what you have to remember in this is just note there are no STRB and STR uh, that is STRSB and STRSH instructions. Uh, reason uh, we are performing the right operation to the memory. So whatever the address held in the register, whatever the data held in the register, that will be written. Whether the data in the register is signed data or unsigned data, that doesn't matter. We will simply perform the right operation to the memory. So STRH instruction can be used, which can deal with signed or unsigned, uh, that is half word data, 16-bit data, which can be written to the memory. And STRB, same instruction can be used to write either the signed byte data or unsigned byte data to the specified memory location. So with respect to load, whenever you are retrieving and you are writing to a register which is 32 bit, there are different uh, mnemonics supported like LDRB, LDRSB, LDRSH, uh, uh, okay, LDRH and so on. But with respect to store, there are only these three mnemonics, STR for 32 bit, STRH for 16 bit, and STRB for 8 bit, where it is signed or unsigned the data transfer to the memory. Okay, so this is what we need to know. Moving on to a more important point. So LDR and STR instructions can load and store data on a boundary alignment that is the same as the data type size being loaded or stored. So what do you mean by this? So if you consider LDR instruction, it is 32-bit trans data transfer, right, between the processor register and the memory. So whatever the data that is fetched from the memory, that address will be multiple of 4 or divisible by 4. That means the data will be aligned on a 4-byte word boundary. So this is about 32-bit data transfer. So that is the meaning of this instruction. This load store instruction will be having the data on a 4-byte word boundary. So that is, uh, since LDR, STR will deal with uh, the data type size as 4 byte, so that will be the alignment, word alignment uh, uh, for which, uh, that or in which the data is stored, okay. So this is the address you are seeing, which is multiple of 4, 0, 4, 8. Since each data will be occupying 4 bytes of memory space, you can observe on a 4 byte word boundary, the data will be aligned in case of load and store instruction. Coming to few problems, simple problems on load and store. So this is the question given. Load register R0 with the contents of the memory address pointed to by register R1. Here R1 is acting as a pointer. The mnemonic to be used is the LDR instruction. You can simply specify LDR R0, content of R1. What is the equivalent instruction for it? Here the offset value is 0. You can give LDR R0, content of R1, hash 0. So here R1 acts as a base address register. Okay, it holds the base address. And offset, if you are not specifying any offset, it is treated as 0. This is the equivalent instruction for LDR R0, content of R1. So what this instruction will do? 
it loads a word from the address stored in register R1 and places that uh, data into the register R0. So this is the operation performed by NDR R0 comma content of R1. Coming to the next instruction, store the contents of register R0 to the memory address pointed to by R1. So what is the instruction you are going to use? It is STR instruction. STR R0 comma content of R1. Where uh, the offset here is 0. So what is the operation performed by this instruction? This instruction will store the contents of R0 register to the address which is held in R1 register. And here, as I told, offset is 0. From the base address, at what offset the data is stored? It is at 0 offset. And the register R1 is called as the base address register. These are two uh, direct or simple examples of load and store. Moving on to the addressing modes. So far, what we have discussed is well, the three types of load store instructions, single register transfer, multiple register transfer, and swap instructions supported in R. Then we listed all the load store instructions supported in R with respect to the data type, maybe 32-bit data, 16-bit data, or byte data. With respect to these three data types, signed and unsigned, we saw the load and store instructions supported. So now what we are discussing is the addressing modes with respect to load store instruction. So before going to the addressing mode, uh, we need to know the indexing methods used in each of those load store instructions. So these are the three indexing methods uh, that are incorporated in the addressing modes what we are going to discuss. One is pre-index with write back, other one is pre-index and one more is post-index. So the addressing modes, what we are going to discuss with respect to load store, they are going to make use of one of these uh, three indexing methods. So what do you mean by pre-index with write back, pre-index and post-index? First, we'll discuss this. Then we shall list out the addressing modes with respect to load store. And we will see a few examples. Okay. See. So this is the table which shows the indexing methods uh, that we have listed. Uh, that is pre-index with write back, pre-index and post-index. And what you are seeing in this table is, uh, you, know, you can just see in the first column, this is the indexing methods listed, pre-index with write back, pre-index and post-index. And in second column, what you are seeing is, uh, at from which address the data is retrieved, the effective address, what you can see, uh, the, which gives the starting address from where the data is to be retrieved. So that expression is given here in the second column and in the third column the base address register what you are using in the instruction whether that base address register is updated or not where with respect to these three indexing methods that is listed in the third column and an example is given uh, with respect to each of these three indexing methods okay so just see the first one we shall uh, one by one we shall discuss uh, each of these indexing methods Pre-index with write back. This is the first indexing method listed. Uh, just see the example here in the last column with respect to pre-index with write back. We have uh, taken an LDR instruction as an example. LDR R0 comma content of R1 comma hash code and exclamatory mark is given. So what this symbol indicates is the, that the instruction writes the calculated address back to the base address register. That means if we are giving this uh, not symbol, it is write back. After updating R1 register by 4, the result will be written back to R1 register. That means the base address register is being updated if we are giving this not symbol. Okay? That's the mean. See? Base, you can see the third column. Base address register is updated by what value? Whatever the data held in R1, R1 plus 4. So this updated value will be stored back in the base address register. In the example, it is R1 register being used. Okay. And from where the data is fetched, how the effective address is calculated to fetch the data? It is R1, which is the base address register plus the offset. What we have specified is 4 here in the example. So the content of base address register plus 4 is taken. Whatever the effective address will get from that address, data is fetched and it is returned to the R0 register. So that is the meaning of pre-index with write back. 
just see the next address, uh, next index method. It is pre-index. It is not having write back. What do you mean by this? Pre-index means before accessing the data, it updates the address held in R1. See, R1 content is taken, 4 is added. Whatever the effective address you'll get from that address, data is fed and it is transferred to R0 register. But it is not going to write this updated address to the base address register. You can observe base address register is not updated if you are using pre-index addressing mode. We have already used this pre-index addressing mode in our lab uh, program implementation, right? LDR, R0, comma, content of R1, comma, hash 4. This is an example instruction you are seeing where not is not given. That means it is not going to update the base address register. It remains constant. Only we have specified the offset. So to calculate the effective address, it adds a 4 to the base address register content from that data is fed and it is transferred to the R0 register. Let's see from where the data is fed, base plus offset. So from this address, data is fed and it is transferred to nation register. This is pre-index. So what is the difference you are finding between pre-index with write back and pre-index? See, in both the cases, uh, the effective address is calculated uh, similarly. The base address register content is taken, 4 is added. Here, in our example, offset is given as 4, 4 is added, and whatever the address will get from that address, data is fed. You can observe the second column in both of these two indexing methods. It is the memory of base plus offset only. But what is the difference you are finding is, in the first example instruction, not is given, which updates the base address register, base plus offset, uh, that will be the updated value in R1 register. But in the second index method, it is not going to update the uh, base address register. Okay. To calculate the effective address only, it updates the address. But once you see after the execution of this instruction, if you just check the R1 register content, it remains the same. It will not be updated. Whereas in uh, previous example, R1 register content will be updated. Previously, if it is having 1000, then after adding 4, uh, once after completion of execution of LDR, R0, comma, content of R1, comma, hash 4, not, once this instruction is executed, it updates the address in R1 by 4. That is not the case in second uh, index method. Okay. Coming to the third, post index, here uh, we are going to uh, take the data from the address held in R1. Then the base, just see the second column for the last index method, it is base. Uh, whatever the address held in base address register, from that address data is fed. After that, base address register is updated. See the example LDR R0, comma, content of R1, comma, hash 4. So this is post index. So first and last are going to update the base address register. In first index method, first it updates the base address register and from that address data is fed. Whereas in the last index method, post index, current content of base address register is taken to fetch the data and then base address register is updated by 4. So this is pre-index and post index uh, methods. Okay. So these three methods are used for uh, addressing the memory with respect to load and store instructions. So with respect to each of these three, there are uh, uh, three different addressing modes. So in total, nine addressing modes we are going to discuss with respect to load and store instructions. So three addressing modes with respect to pre-index with write back, three addressing modes with respect to pre-index uh, yeah, method, and three more addressing modes we'll discuss with respect to post-index method. So in total, nine addressing modes we'll discuss uh, uh, in uh, load and store instructions. And each of these are with respect to the index index. So all addressing modes, what they are going to talk any of these three index methods. Hope you have understood the index method. Pre-index with write back, which updates the base address register. Pre-index, which doesn't update the base address register. Post-index, which will also update the base address register. So what is the difference between pre-index and post-index? In pre-index, first the address is updated. From that address, data is fed. Whereas in post-index, 
current address is taken for data access, then the address is updated. So this is about pre-index and post-index method. Okay, which is uh, the same thing I've explained in the pre index uh, with right back, which calculates the address from the base address plus the offset, and then it updates the address, whether the base address register with new address. Whereas pre index, it uh, doesn't update the base address register, post index will update the base address register, but it is done after the address is used. To access the data, first the current address is uh, used and then only the base address register will be updated. This is post index method. Okay? And the application of index post index methods. So, pre index method we can use for accessing the element in the data structure. So, some specific element you want to access that can be done or in any menu. So, you or uh, commonly we use our post index and pre index with the right back. So these modes we'll use for traversing an array. So successive uh, memory locations you want to access to retrieve the data stored in an array, we can make use of uh, this index or pre index with the right back. You can observe uh, in implementation what I discussed in the lab syllabus program. I used the uh, uh, pre index method without right back address. And I also use post index. Current address is taken, which is held in the base address register. And for the next iteration, it will be updated by four. So these are the two index methods we have used in our example, uh, in our lab syllabus program so far. Pre index method and post index. If you are using key method without write then you have to update. We, were, we had written a separate instruction to update the, uh, that is the index register. Correct? Uh, updating it by four each time we had used three index uh, method right so any of these three index methods can be used for accessing the memory location pre index pre index with right back and post index now we want to the one more example to explain you uh, how actually pre index with right back pre index and post index will work just consider the simple example assume r naught is having the value zero R1 is having this uh, value, 9 followed by four zeros. And this is the ad uh, data held at these addresses. Okay. How to read this uh, notation? 32-bit data at the address 9000. This is the 32-bit data at this address. Okay. And it is actually 9000. Just a minute. R1 is having this address 9000. At 9000 address, assume this is the 32 bit data head 01010101. At 9004 address, assume this is the data head. Okay. And coming to the LDR instruction, can you identify the index method used in this instruction? LDR R0, comma, content of R1, comma, hash 4, not. What is the index method? Come again. And pre text right back. Yes, very good. Pre index with right back is the addressing uh, the index method that is used. Uh, what is the operation performed here? What will be the post condition once this instruction is executed? Can anyone explain this instruction? R1 is the base address register. What R1 contains is 9000. What is our port R0 will hold after this instruction is executed? 0 to 0 to 0 to 9. Yes. R1 content is taken. It is 9000. To this 4 is added. You will get 9004. What is the data present at this 9004 address? It is 0 to 0 to 0 to 0 to. That is fetch and it is transferred to R0 register. What about R1? Previous R1 content was 9000. Now what will be the content of R1? 9000 is See, it is pre indexed with right back. Will it be 9000 itself? Pre indexed with right back. It will update the base address register. Pre indexed means first it calculates the effective address by adding the 
a base address held in the base address register plus the hop set. After fetching the data from that address, you can observe the address will also be updated in the uh, register. There is a base address register. It is right back. Whatever the updation done, that, that, that updated value will be returned to the base address register. So R1 will be having the address 9004. Okay. So for the same precondition, whatever you are seeing, uh, we shall take one more instruction uh, that is LDR R0, R1, hash 4. What is the indexing method used here? Index method. Is it pre index or post index? Pre index. Pre index, right? Pre index. Now tell me the difference. What will be stored in R0 and R1? What is the post condition? This is pre index. Tell me the post condition for the same pre condition. If uh, LDR R0, comma, content of R1, comma, hash 4 is executed, what will be the value in R0 and R1? R0, 0 to 0 to 1. Very good. Yes. R1, 9000. 9000. See the difference? This is the difference between pre index with write back and pre index. Pre index with write back will update the base address register, whereas pre index uh, method will not update the base address register. But to calculate the effective address, both will add the content of base address register with the offset specified in the instruction. Hope this is clear. So for the same precondition, let us consider one more uh, instruction. LDR R0, comma, content of R1, comma, hash 4. This is post index. Okay. So what will be the post condition? What will be the contents of R0 and R1? Assume the same precondition. R0 with 0, R1 with 9000. Uh, with these memory contents, if this instruction is executed, what happens? What will be R0 content? 0, 1, 0, 1. Very good. R0 will contain 0, 1, 0, 1. And since the R1 register is having 9000 address, from the 9000 address, what is the 32 bit data fetch? It is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And after retrieving the data or after using the current address held in R1, R1 register content will be updated. What is the updated address in R1? It will be 9004. Hope this is clear. This is how pre index with write back, pre index, and post index methods work. Okay? And with respect to these three index methods, we are having nine addressing modes. So whether you specify the offset as an immediate data or the offset is specified in the register or it is a barrel shifter operation you can use for specifying the offset. So based on these three, for each of these index methods, you are having uh, 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 different uh, three different addressing modes that we will see in this uh, slide. Okay. Below table, it shows the addressing modes available for load store of 32-bit word or an unsigned pipe. Kindly note, I am stressing, if you want to deal with 32-bit data transfer, it may be signed or unsigned or an unsigned byte transfer you want to make with respect to register and the memory. These are the nine addressing modes you can use. So why I am stressing this is there are the other addressing, uh, same type of addressing mode supported with respect to half word and signed byte transfer. A few exceptional exceptions are there which cannot be used in uh, those uh, data types. Okay. So these addressing modes listed are with respect to 32-bit word or an unsigned byte. For signed byte, all these addressing modes cannot be used. A uh, few modes uh, cannot be used with respect to signed byte. That's why I'm stressing that. See, this table, it shows single register load store addressing modes uh, with respect to word or unsigned byte transfer. So these are the nine addressing modes. Uh, it, you may By seeing this, you may feel it difficult. But if you remember those three index methods, so what are those three index methods? It is pre-index with, uh, that is pre-index, pre-index with write back and post index. Remember those three index methods, as I already told, with respect to each of these in, uh, three index methods, you are having uh, uh, addressing modes. Let's see, first three are with respect to pre-index method. Rest three are with respect to pre-index write back. Last three are with respect to post index. So for each index method, three, three addressing modes are there. Uh, for first, you can see pre-index with immediate offset, pre-index with register offset, pre-index with scaled register offset. 
So based on whether offset is specified as an immediate data or offset is held in a register or off for offset, whether we are using barrel shifter operation based on this, these are the three addressing nodes. It is pre-index. Pre-index meaning it is not going to change the base address register. Remember, pre-index method will not update the base address register. But the offset, what you specify in the instruction, can reside uh, in a register or it can be given as an immediate data or it can be scaled register offset where we can use barrel shifter. Similarly, REST 3, pre-index write back with immediate offset, pre-index write back with register offset, pre-index write back with scaled register offset. In these three addressing modes, it is a write back method, index method used, where it is going to update the base address register. And the offset can be immediate data or it can be held in a register or it can be uh, the barrel shifter operation you can use for the register which holds the offset. So that is the meaning of the rest three addressing modes. And last three are with respect to post index. So immediate post index, register post index and scaled register post index. You know how post index works, right? Post index, current address held in the base address register is taken to fetch the data or to write the data then the base address register will be updated. So here the offset we can specify as an immediate or it can be in a register or we can have the barrel shifter operation for the register which holds the offset. Here we can see the syntax, addressing syntax here. Uh, uh, once you see the examples, you can uh, easily understand how this syntax can be used in the instruction. So first it is RN, comma, RN it is the base address register. Okay, RN here in, in this syntax, what we are seeing, RN is the base address register, RM, uh, which holds the offset. Okay, RN comma hash plus or minus, it gives signed offset, uh, uh, that is plus or minus offset 12, 12-bit 12 offset, which will be encoded in the instruction. So out of 32-bit machine code, 12-bit will be reserved to specify the offset, okay. And second one, you can see RN comma plus or minus RM, where offset is residing in a register. Third instruction, RN comma plus or minus RM comma shift. Shift means uh, you can replace shift with any of those five barrel shifter operations. Shift space, shift amount we are going to specify, which is an immediate data. So this is uh, pre-index with scaled register offset. And pre-index right back with immediate, it's the same syntax. Only thing is not symbol you are giving in REST 3. In the last column, uh, fourth, fifth and sixth instruction, uh, sixth addressing mode you can observe. RN comma hash plus or minus offset, that is 12 bit offset. With after square brace, you are specifying not symbol. For fifth also, it is not symbol. It is write back, pre-index write back, which is going to update the base address register. Okay. Similarly, pre-index write back with register offset. Rn comma plus or minus Rm not and pre-index write back with scaled register offset. Rn within square brace. This is the syntax. We need to use the square brace. First we will specify the base address register comma plus or minus the index register comma shift. There is a barrel shifter operation we will specify space hash shift immediate. After that we will close the square brace and we will specify not since it is write back pre-index write back. Okay. The last three are with respect to post index where the offset can be immediate data. As you can see, first we'll specify within square brace the base address register, then we'll put comma and we'll specify that immediate offset. Or it may be register offset as we are seeing in the last but one column, uh, last but one row, RN comma plus or minus RM. And the last uh, addressing mode, it is RN comma plus or minus RM comma shift space hash shift immediate so this is scaled register post index current content is taken and then this is what the updation done to the base address register the rm the index register is left shifted or right shift depending on what the barrel shifter operation you are using so uh, that uh, value will be added to the base address register and that updated value will be stored in the base address register so what you have to remember is the index method supported in ARM, pre-index write back, pre-index and post-index. With respect to each of these three, uh, there are three addressing modes supported. So in total, three into three, nine addressing modes supported. 
So for pre-index, it is immediate offset, register offset, scale register offset. Pre-index right back with immediate offset, register offset and scale register offset. Similarly, post-index, immediate post-index, registered post-index and scale registered post-index. So this, so if you remember the index method, for each of these index methods, these are the three addressing modes supported. So this is the entire summary of uh, the nine addressing modes supported for 32-bit transfer, transfer as well as unbyte, uh, sorry, unsigned byte transfer. For unsigned uh, load and store byte transfer, these are the nine addressing modes supported. Okay. As I already mentioned, signed offset. It may be either positive or negative, which is the offset from the base address. Immediate is nothing but the address is calculated using the base address register plus the 12-bit offset, which is encoded in the instruction. Register offset, where the, to calculate the effective address, base address register plus the content of the register is taken. And scaled means uh, we are going to take the offset register or the index register. Its value will be, uh, uh, we are performing the barrel shifter operation on that value and that will be added with the base address register to calculate the effective value. So that is the scaled register offset. These are the examples of uh, LDR instruction. See, this table gives you the LDR instructions. So similarly, you can apply uh, the addressing modes for STR instruction. In our example, we have not considered STR. You can apply these addressing modes for STR also. But what you have to remember is whatever the nine addressing modes we have listed, that is for 32 bit uh, word data transfer or unsigned byte, okay? See, see the instruction and also observe in all these example instructions given, R0 is the destination register. So in the uh, column, if in the table, in this column where R0 equals is written, what we are going to see is whether or from which address the data is fetched and it is returned to the R0 register and whether the base address register R1 is being updated or not. If it is updated, by what amount it will be updated, that is shown in this table. And as I already told, for each of the index method, three addressing modes are there. Pre-index with write back, pre-index and post-index are the index methods. Three example instructions seeing with respect to each of these index methods. See, LDR R0, comma, content of R1, comma, hash 0x4. What is the addressing mode? Can you list the addressing mode in this instruction? LDR R0, comma, content of R1, comma, hash 4 not. What is the addressing mode? Index method is pre-index with write back. What is the addressing mode? Can you identify the addressing mode? What is the addressing mode used? Yes. Nine addressing mode we had listed. Nine addressing mode we had listed. Out of those nine addressing mode, identify the addressing mode of the first instruction in this table. By using immediate address. Yes. Pre index write back our pre-index write back with immediate offset, okay? So second instruction, pre-index write back with register offset. Third is pre-index write back with scaled register offset, where LSR is the barrel shifter operation that is used, okay? This is scaled register offset. Uh, next three, with respect to pre-index method, you can see. Pre-index with immediate offset, index with register offset, pre-index with scaled register offset. Last three instructions are examples for these three addressing modes. That is immediate post index, register post index, and scaled post index. Okay, scaled register post index can be the addressing mode. So totally nine addressing modes with respect to the three index methods. And just observe, uh, coming to the last two columns, from which address, if the LDR R0, comma, content R1, comma, hash 4, not, First, the effective address is calculated. How it is calculated? Base address register content is taken. 4 is added. From this address, the data is fetched and it is returned to R0 register. And 
whether it is going to update R1 register, yes, it is going to update R1 since it is right back given. R1 equals R1 plus 4. If the current address held in R1, 4 is added, that is written to the R1 register. Coming to the second instruction, how the effective address is calculated? R1 plus R2. R1 is the base address register, R2 is the offset or the index. So R1 plus R2 are added. From this address, the data is fetched and it is written to R0 register. And whether uh, R1 register is updated? Yes, since it is right back. R1 equals R plus R2. That will be the updated address held in R1 register. R plus equals R2 means R1 equals R1 plus R2. Third instruction, LDR R0 comma R1 comma R2 comma LSR hash 4, not. So what is the operation performed? It takes R2 register content, it right shifts by 4. After that, that updated address will be added to R1 register. From this effective address, the data is fed and it is transferred to R1, R0 register. And just observe by what value R1 is updated. R1 equals R1 plus R2 uh, logical shift right 4. So R2 content is uh, right shifted 4 times and this data is added to R1 register and this updated address is stored in R1 register. Okay. Next, uh, next three you can see this is with respect to pre-index. You can observe R1, the base address register is not at all updated. The pre-index method will not update the base address register. But to calculate the effective address, same expression it uses. Whatever we have seen in first three, same three expressions are used to calculate the effective address. So that is uh, to the base address register, 4 is added. And from that address, data is fetched. Similarly, uh, the next instruction, LDR R0, comma, content of R1, comma, R2, base address and the register which holds the offset, these two contents are added. From that address, data is fetched. But it is not going to update the base address register. So here negative offset is given. So minus R2. So R1 minus uh, R2 content is right shifted by 4. This data will be uh, subtracted from base address register. From that address data is fetched. And last three are with respect to post index. Current address held in R1 is taken. Just see the last but one column for the last three instructions. Uh, mem32 of R1. Same expressions you are seeing in all the three instructions. That means since it is post index, current address held in R1 is taken for, fetch the, for fetching the data and then base address register is updated. See, it is immediate offset by 4 the base address register is updated. Next register offset where R2 content is added to R1 in the last but one instruction and scaled register offset where R2 content is right shifted 4 times and this data is added to the base address register to update the base address register. So these are the examples for each of those uh, nine addressing modes. We are seeing one LDR instruction as an example. And what is the effect on uh, base address register? And what is the effective address computation? So all these details you are seeing in this table. Okay. Hope uh, whatever we have discussed in today's class is clear. Uh, there are a few more uh, instructions we have to discuss with respect to signed byte or half word the data transfer using load and store. So, so since it takes time, we shall not discuss in today's class. So in today's class, what we have discussed, that is uh, the load and store instructions, all the different types of load store with respect to the data type supported, that is 32-bit data, 16-bit data, and 8-bit data. And we have seen the index methods, pre-index with the right path, pre-index and post-index. And we have also seen uh, the addressing modes with respect to each of these index method. So that is the pre-index with immediate offset, register offset and scaled register offset and pre-index right back with the immediate offset, register and scaled uh, in, uh, register offset and post-index, immediate post-index, register post-index and scaled uh, register post-index. So these are the nine addressing modes we have discussed with respect to load store, 32-bit word transfer, or unsigned byte transfer, okay?